This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International. I want to welcome you to the Warning Program. Wherever you are watching or listening, welcome. I have with me again Ray Gebauer. He's an unlicensed holistic doctor. And uh, he's written many books. But today we're going to talk about Gateway to Love Part 3. Now, you might want to look him up on the Internet, order some of his books, because uh, I'll tell you what, he knows what he's talking about on our health. And you want to take care of yourself if you want to be in the battle, if you want to uh, serve God most effectively, if you want to be the round for your family. Uh, take care of your body. Most of us don't take care of it the way we should. We've also done a program on the five stresses of life and, and uh, the number one cause of every disease. Now, all of that is on my warning program. If you want to look at my website, www.worldministries.org, you can scroll back over the weeks in the past, and you can see some of these programs. And I would encourage you to do just that. Ray, welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Gateway to Love Part 3. That's what we're talking about today. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so why don't you uh, explain it? Go ahead. Okay, just uh, in case you haven't listened to the previous uh, broadcast, just to give you a sort of broader context and background, I feel very passionate about the fact that the most important principle, the highest principle that we need to fully embrace and engage is is love. Yes. I mean, we don't have to guess or dispute about this. It's clear the greatest commandment Jesus himself said was was the, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and second, your neighbor as yourself. But I'm deeply concerned because just because you realize that's so important doesn't mean that you're able to do it. And most people are not living that much a, a lifestyle of love. Yeah, there are families that are estranged, they're separated, uh, families that have, have rejected maybe their godly parents. Um, you know, the Bible is very clear that the world recognizes Christ through our love. They'll know we're He's Christians disciples. by our yeah. love. Exactly, yeah. But we can know it mentally, but like you said, that's not living it, right? Well, in our culture, and I think pretty much around the world, you know, the true meaning of what love is is either hijacked or it's been distorted or just stolen from us. You go to Google, you know, that's pretty reliable, right? <laughs> and it'll tell you what love is. It says it's an affection, it's a feeling. And so people will use love, the word love loosely and say, you know, I love ice cream. I love pizza. I love my dog. I love God, my <laughs> wife, and I, I love my car. Yeah. You know, so it, it mostly it's not love at all. No, no. And, and so we're operating a very faulty and a dangerously faulty definition of love that basically mentally handicaps us to be fully loving because we think love is just a feeling. And that's not what God had in mind. And so... My message, my life message, is to help people realize that there's four dimensions to love, like four wheels on a car for it to run well. You have to really understand those distinctions, those four dynamics of what love is. And today we'll be talking about a third gateway into that. Good. But the four dimensions of love correspond to the four ways to love God. Sure. Which is to love God of all of our heart. That's the caring element or dimension, loving God of all of our soul, that's the connecting element. We, we need to connect with God, abide in Him, become one with Him. Uh, the third is love God of all of our mind. Out of our mind comes commitment, so we got to be committed to God. Sure. And then the fourth element, love God of all of our strength or, or might, that corresponds to creating, creating value specifically. This is the way God operates. He cares, He connects, he, He's committed obviously and he creates not just the universe he creates value in everything he does with us and for us so if we're going to be like god being a person of love we've got to operate in those four dimensions for love to be complete I mean, well i totally agree and again i know so many people that that uh, they they call themselves christians in fact i know some unfortunately some young pastors even that uh they don't show love uh, to even their parents. In fact, if they disagree with them on some uh, 
position in theology, they reject their parents. I mean, all Christians have known uh, uh, sometimes where family has rejected them. And uh, yet they, they might call themselves Christian. So, you know, what type of love are they exhibiting, Ray? Yeah, not much. And Paul makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians 13, said, even though all these other things, they speak with tongues of men and angels, even if I understand all mysteries, have all knowledge, have enough faith to even move mountains. Yeah. That's pretty big. He said, but I'm still nothing if I don't have love. So people are talking about having faith or being holy or all these things that are important. But if you're missing love, you don't get credit for all that good stuff. So that's the foundation to everything. And that's the biggest missing piece. I don't hear people talking about loving God that much. They talk about how much, know how much God loves you. Well, yeah, that's important. But hey, if you're not loving God, um, you know, you're missing, you're building out of a foundation that's shaky and nothing else counts really without love. Well, that's it. I mean, uh, you get into Corinthians 13, the love chapter. Uh, if you can move mountains, if you have the, the faith to prophesy, and on and on and on. But if you don't have love, you're sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Exactly. People don't care how much Bible knowledge you have. The devil has Bible knowledge, but the devil doesn't have love. Right. And, and so if, if we are more carnal and spiritual, you can say all you want and brag all you want that you're a Christian, but people don't care if they don't see love in you. And even Paul said, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So knowledge and the truth is sort of like the booby price. So, yeah, so you got all this correct doctrine even, assuming it's all correct, but so what? It doesn't count for much if you don't have love. And we're not minimizing uh, the Word of God doctrine. No, all of that is critical. The more of the Word oh, yeah, of God yeah. you have, the better used of God you can be if you have love. In other words, if you have really a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ that's growing intimately, then all of that knowledge of God will help more and more and more. You can have all the love you want, but if you don't have Bible knowledge, uh, there's not much you can do in areas of counseling people. Right. They'll recognize you're a Christian, but that's about it, right? Exactly, yeah. So that's the foundation of the four dimensions of love, the four C's, the caring, connecting, committing, and creating value. And we need to take this personally, evaluate ourselves in those four ways, and how am I, how am I loving God in those four dimensions, how am I loving others in those four ways. And along with that, I have the triple A formula to have a better life. Okay. That's also like a gateway into that. Yes. It's, it's sort of more of a, a little practical, more practical way of, of seeing that you are loving. Sure. So we've covered the first two of the three A's. The first was just simply attention. Yeah. That's this what God wants, first of all. You bet. But, you know, I want attention. We all want attention just by our nature. And so... It, you can't really love someone authentically if you don't give them attention. Right, right. You know, it starts with that. So that's simple. So it's the easy way to look at it. Am I giving people positive attention? You know, and that goes into a healthy marriage. If your wife speaks to you, she wants to uh, have you look at her in the eyes. Yeah. Uh, Listen, are you I hearing me? I, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, children, the same way. They yeah. walk in and talk to their parents, but their dad's reading a newspaper and never looks at them. Yeah. So when we don't give people attention, we're depriving them of love. That's it. And that, and that, that you hit it on the nutshell. And so we have a lot of, uh, if we want to say, selfish people out there, and even parents and, and fathers that... Uh, man, you got to understand that your children need you. Uh, so you need to operate in love. Pay attention. Yep, right? that, that's, that's the first gateway to love. There you go. Paying attention, positive attention. Uh, in fact, children prefer negative attention over no attention. That's right. But They'll we, get in trouble just so you uh, pay attention. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, you, but we never outgrow that. Even God still wants our attention. And if we, if we don't give him a, enough attention, we get in trouble. That's right. <laughs> a big trouble. Yeah. We get, we, we get our spanking from our Heavenly Father, so exactly. to speak. Exactly. He disciplines us. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And people give God no attention. We know where they end up in the lake of fire. You there, know? You so there you it's go. It's serious. So that's the, f the first uh, uh, gateway to love, as I call it. Uh, the second gateway of love is similar, but it's like at a little higher level, and that is appreciation. Not only do we have to give people attention, but we have to appreciate people. 
well, we start with God. We got to appreciate God. Say, well, God, you're awesome. Wow, like, you're, you're amazing. And appreciate God, not just feel it, where it starts, feel appreciation, but express it and say, God, you know, I love you. You're amazing. And we exalt you. And we, we sing songs to God. And so we give God attention and our appreciation, which you could call thanksgiving or praise. But, you know, but everyone else needs appreciation, too. Oh, totally. Totally. And in fact, again, just like you're supposed to give appreciation to your children, um, God wants to hear it, too, like you said, Ray. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where we spend time appreciating him, worshiping him, talking to him. So something as simple as giving someone positive attention, even just for a few seconds, and then on top of that, appreciation, I mean, that is a, a can be a high-impact gift. Yes. It isn't like you just appreciating, but that's a gift. It's, it's life-enhancing, life-enriching. Good. And to withhold appreciation, uh, you know, like Proverbs says, 327, Solomon said, do not withhold good to those who deserve it within your power to act. Yes, yes. And so we, we have so many opportunities where we don't take advantage of. And Paul said in Galatians 5, you know, t in every opportunity, do good, especially the household of faith. And so by not giving attention, by not giving appreciation, we're sort of ripping them off. We could have, we didn't. And, uh, and you can't fully express love if you're not giving attention and appreciation. No, that's excellent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I have Ray Gebauer, un unlicensed holistic doctor. And we're talking today about Gateway to Love. We're on part three. If you have not uh, seen the other parts or, or listened to them, go to my website, www.worldministries.org, and click on, you can click on television or radio and go in the rear, and you can find programs I've done with him. And so you're going to find it very fascinating. It's very important for relationships, all levels of relationship. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> gateway to love. Now, this is part three. Ray, continue. Okay. Probably spent a little too much time reviewing the first two parts. but So part three here, the third A, building on top of attention, appreciation, is affirmation. Mm, good. And, you know, of course, God needs affirmation. Tell God that he's a good God. He's a great God. And we praise God. So we affirm who God is. Uh, so that's fundamental. That's foundational. But just because we're made in the image of God, we need affirmation, you too. You bet. You bet. And that's part of how we express love. It isn't enough to feel loving. Because loving is, isn't even a feeling anyway. But even if you have that whole mentality, if you're not expressing it, then it's not for real. You know, it's like having a bridge between, you know, a bridge that doesn't connect to anything. You know, it's only when it connects it's the real bridge. So That's you have right. to, for love to be r real in reality, you have to be doing it with a person, not just thinking of love or believing in it. So affirmation is the third gateway. When we affirm people in two different ways, then they're going to experience love. Yes, yes. So the first way we affirm people is we see something that they may not even see. But we see something that's good in them, and we identify it, and we speak it. Good. You say, you know, like, like John, you know, I, I, I see that, that, that you are a wise person or that, that you are a very caring person. Or I see that you are really dedicated to God. You love God with all of your heart. And I admire that. So you you see something and then you speak it, yes, which reinforces their b belief in themselves. Because a lot of people struggle with who they really are. You know, they have self doubt, and we need to be encouraging each other, building each other up. And the scripture says, encourage one another. That's right, because we need it. So affirmation is one of the ways we do that, in, in that you're expressing love. So if you have an opening to affirm somebody, then we need to. Otherwise, you're withholding good from them. That's right. The, the, there's another element of affirmation, which isn't so much speaking of what is, but what could be. Okay. It's like seeing a possibility. Yeah. It may be like a little seed isn't much, but it's a possibility for a tree. Sure, sure. And so a lot of people, 
you know, they can, it's, it's valuable for them to receive an affirmation about how you can see them in the future. Like my vision of you or what God showed me he's calling you to be and you affirming them that they're going to have this kind of ministry or this kind of impact or, or whatever. But it doesn't have to be only what's already going, but it's also about the possibilities. Uh, like when, when God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, he says, well, I'm just a youth. God said, don't say you're a youth. Well, Jeremiah was telling the truth. The guy <laughs> says, don't say that because that's not useful. You'll see yourself not just as a youth, but as a prophet I'm calling you to. He says, let the weak say I am strong. Okay, you are weak, but say, don't say I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. And we can glory in our weaknesses too, and God's grace is sufficient. But we need to hold ourselves as warriors, as sons of God, not I'm just a poor sinner saved by grace, you know. So people need to be affirmed of who they are and who they can be, as God wants to take us from glory to glory. He's a God about transformation, not just, you know, maintaining. Yeah, so we're supposed to be very careful with our words. We don't want to condemn ourselves, but we want to encourage ourselves. So let that love language be consistent even with yourself. And, and so you can grow from glory to glory and fly with the eagles. Uh, you can overcome. Uh, Ray? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> so those are the, the three simple gateway methods, I feel, that... It makes it a little easier to be expressing love when you think also in terms of the three A's of attention, appreciation, and affirmation. And so if we want to be people of love, lovers of God and people, we need to be affirming people. And most people don't do that much. And if people don't do it much, people don't get it much. That's they, right. They don't, they don't get enough attention. They don't get enough appreciation. And they don't get much affirmation. That's right. And it's all easy to do. But what's easy to do is often not easy to do. And sometimes we just need to be reminded. This, If you want to really love God and love others, you got to be doing these kind of things. Otherwise, it's just a mind game. You know, you know, so. Well, I think it's so important because if, if you are trying to reach people, if you're trying to reach uh, your church, um, the people in your church. Again, this is critical that you have love in reality, love in action, not just words of love. Uh, you must exhibit the love of Christ. Again, we've said it before. You know, they'll know that you are Christians by, by your love. Your love. Yeah. And so you can speak all you want. Jesus exhibited love at the well with the, the woman. And uh, everywhere he went, he exhibited well uh, love. The, you know, he gave it, you know, he did it well, show love to the yeah. sinner. And yeah. so this is what drew the sinner to Christ. Yeah. Now, so if you, for example, let's say you're talking to an unbeliever. And so one of the ways you can open people, some people are not open, and you, even God can't help someone who's not open. But with the right kind of questions and with coming out of compassion, oftentimes we can start getting cracking the door open. Yes. You know, the right kind of questions. That's you know, right. Jesus was really good at asking questions. He was. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do better at that, too. So let's say you're talking to an unbeliever. So, so you can give them attention. That starts opening them up because they're, you're getting positive attention. Say something that you appreciate about them. And then, as far as affirmation, you say, I, I, I could tell you, you're a person who, you're a truth seeker. You want to know the truth. Sure. Yeah, I see that you're a person of integrity. You know, I, I, I see that there's something missing in your life, and you know, I think I have something that could, could really enrich your life. But, you know, you, want to, you don't want to start off talking about their sin. I mean, you've got to get to that point, repentance, you have to do that. But to to open them up for a conversation, they need to feel valued. You know, you know they need to see that you're, you're caring, you're, you want to connect with them, and you're committed to what's best for them, and you're creating value by spending time with them. And so along with that, you know, think also of attention, appreciation, and what can you affirm about them that's already there, and as well as firm as a future possibility. You know. Well, that's very true. Uh, very true. I mean... Um 
you you cannot clean up a fish until you catch the fish. Yeah. Uh, and, and so if we're going to catch people, make fishers of men, you do it by showing them love. Yes. And then later on, you know, their life changes. They get cleaned up. But the f- starting point is love. Yeah. And calling people to repentance is part of our loving people. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, if you want people to uh, have a future and a destiny, eternal life, you have to touch on these subjects. And this yeah. is why people accept Christ. Is they, they, do, they know deep inside there's, there's a God. And they know deep inside most of them are afraid of meeting that God. Because they're not right with God, yeah. And so you have to you have to touch on what separates you from God, yeah. but all of it is done through love. Yes, that's got to be the foundation, the starting point. Uh, the goal, Paul said, the goal of our instruction is love from yes. a pure heart. Yes. Now another application to affirmation is using it on ourselves. Okay. And I think this is biblical. Uh, the word affirmation is in, in most translations. But, but, but God has given us authority because he's given us authority. Like, uh, we can declare. And so for me, declaration, affirmation is the same thing. So we need to declare that we are sons of God, for example. Yes. And affirm that we're not just some sinner saved by grace, but God loves us because we're valuable. God doesn't create junk. He doesn't save people that are of no value. The fact that he saves Zanibun shows that he values them. And so we need to affirm ourselves as, you know, I am a lover. I'm a lover of God. I, I love people. You know, I'm a person of integrity. Um, you know, I, I speak the truth. Um, I'm here to serve and help. Uh, I'm a son of God. I'm in full-time ministry. If you're a believer, you should see yourself as a full-time minister. Yeah, and, and that's a good point, Ray, that Jesus... He never pulled punches. Uh, he was very truthful with everyone, yes. including the Pharisees, the Sadducees, everything he spoke. Uh, it was always the truth. But again, he exhibited that type of love. And so people still knew he cared about them, even when he challenged them. And so we have to exhibit that genuine love. Jesus was love, and he did it all so people would escape eternal damnation. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Here's a, a great historical example of a, a declaration, uh, which is the same as affirmation. Uh, a couple hundred years ago, the United, well, the 13 colonies were just getting fed up with how they were being oppressed. And they got the point and says, enough is enough. We're not going to take this anymore. And uh, they declared themselves to be free. Yes. Now, were they free? No, they weren't free. And it took seven years of a bloody war that they barely won in order to establish that freedom. But they, before the freedom actually happened, they declared, they affirmed that we are a free people ahead of time because it was a possibility and their commitment. So they declared that, even wrote it down. It's called the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and so God calls us to declare things that are not yet true. Because that's how it's a function of faith to declare. You can declare someone to be well. You don't always just ask God. Sometimes you just declare it. So we need to be declaring things about other people and declaring things about ourselves. You know, you know, not just about who you are now, but who you can be, who, what God can do through you in the next 5, 10, 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening, watching the warning program today with, again, Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International and my special guest, Ray Gebauer, unlicensed holistic doctor. And we are talking today on Gateway to Love, and this is part three. Look at my website, www.worldministries.org, www.worldministries.org, and look at our other programs. You're going to be fascinated, and you're going to be blessed. And uh, may God richly bless you.